C.S. Lewis is one uh, of the great authors of our modern era, and Lewis is responsible for the Chronicles of Narnia, um, but he's also responsible for some of the great literary works of his time and some of the greatest thinking done in kind of post-World War I uh, timeline. Uh, Lewis began to believe in Jesus as his savior much later in his life. It was not something that came up with his childhood. His education and his scholarly pursuits caused him to keep Jesus kind of at arm's length and um, skeptically investigate his claims. And he recorded his journey to to some degree and and how he kind of came to faith in a book that's called Mere Christianity. And in Mere Christianity, he wrote this. A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on the level with the man who says that he is a poached egg or else he would be the devil of hell. You you must make your choice. Either this man was and is the son of God or else he's a madman or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool You can spit at him and and kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us at all. He did not intend to. From this came the idea that there's really only one of three ways to address Jesus. You either... um, you, you actually can't say that he's just a good guy because a good guy wouldn't lie about who he is. And if he wasn't lying about being the son of God, but he's not actually the son of God, then that makes him absolutely crazy. So the only options that Jesus has left us with is that he is either a lunatic or he's a liar or he is Lord. Now, there's been plenty of people throughout history who have claimed to be the Messiah or even the Son of God, who were not. Okay, Given time, they proved over time their, their falsehood of their claim. I mean, in my own timeline, my own lifetime, I think of the, the tragic end that came to things in Waco, Texas, where David Koresh convinced himself and the people in his compound that he was the Lamb of Revelation. But it was all a lie. And that lie led to the loss of life. He was nothing more than a cult leader a story with a beginning and a clear end. That cannot be said about Jesus. Now, another option is to assume that Jesus must have been, as his family tried to accuse him of earlier on, uh, out of his mind, that he was crazy. Some would use the insanity plea to try and explain away how Jesus lived, what he said, and the following that he had. And if he genuinely thought that he was the Son of God and was not, It's a matter of insanity. And were that not an empty tomb that eyewitness accounts pointed to and and that that his life showed uh, up in history after the crucifixion, perhaps a lunatic would make sense. But if you are not comfortable calling him a liar and you're not comfortable questioning his sanity and saying that he's a lunatic, then there is really only one other choice. Jesus must be God. He must be our Lord. Repeatedly, uh, there are people in Scripture who encounter Jesus, and they are overcome by the reality that he is, in fact, Lord. There was the blind man. Uh, that was, uh, there was the previously demonized man. There was Thomas. There was John. There was the other James and John. Uh, his own mother. His own brothers. Enemies of his, like Paul, who were killing people before they met Jesus. Time and time again, people were overwhelmed by the only possible answer for who Jesus is. He is God. He is Lord. He is everything that he claims to be. And you can find confidence in that today. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we... uh, We thank you for putting up with our questions and putting up with our doubts. And there are plenty of us who have convinced ourselves that we are smarter than we really are. And uh, we have come up with all kinds of reasons and explanations for why we're smarter than other people around us and, and why we're smarter than you. 
and yet you just wait patiently and you wait on uh, truth to prevail and it does. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he was clear about who he was and um, that his life and his death and his resurrection proved that he was exactly who he says he was. God, forgive us for our arrogance. Forgive us for our times when we uh, claim that we know more, when we uh, are put into stages of doubt because we can't figure something out because we figure we must be smart enough to figure it out. And if we can't figure it out, it must not be true. God, help us to put that behind us and to come closer to you and come closer to your truth. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his forgiveness and his grace. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Well, we're going to be in good shape by Sunday. We've got good weather that's coming this weekend, at least as far as we can tell. I know we're still a few days out, but it's looking good. Uh, we're excited about what's going to happen here at First Christian on Sunday for Easter. And uh, our services are at 930 and 11 o'clock. And uh, we're encouraging people to come a little bit earlier than normal uh, because we know that parking is going to be an issue and finding a, a seat's going to be an issue. And we're excited about that. And uh, we have folks who are going to be here to help in, in making that all come together. But we would ask that you would be patient with us. There's going to be uh, just a great number of things happening in the service. And I really don't want to give any of them away, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and we've also got a photo booth here that, that's going to be great for families to enjoy. And uh, hope that you'll be with us uh, for Easter Sunday, 9.30 and 11 o'clock, as we celebrate the victory of Jesus. And we will see you then.